that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be, you and me, we're family. Sing home, hey, long for the ride home. Hey, I'll stay by your side. Tunisia and Calibia was the last port of call. Calibia um, is a fishing port and there's a lot of flies around so we're really glad to get away from those flies but um, Calibia itself was beautiful, the town was nice, the coastline was beautiful so um, yeah it was kind of sad to, to leave it really. That is Cap Bon I think on the north of Tunisia. Farewell. Perfect wind today, we've got it from the southeast. that's what we've been waiting for. There's a lot of ships around, but we are going through a shipping channel. Okay. We've been in North Africa, Tunisia for over a month now, but yeah, we've got everything done we wanted to and a bit more. We've got some cushions done, we've got the solar arch done, we've got the bottom uh, gel shielded, and a lot more besides. Well, the idea is to uh, get past the shipping channel uh, before nightfall um, because we're not transmitting AIS. Um, we still can't trace the fault for that. Um, and there's a lot of uh, marine traffic between here and Sardinia. So we're just keeping an eye on the uh, AIS receiver. Um, we've got about 20 boats out there, so we want to cross the shipping channel uh, as quickly as possible before nightfall. So it's about a 36 hour passage. And I think we're all kind of uh, quite looking forward to getting back to Europe in a few less flies. Yo, did you get it? Did you get it? Yes. Good. Alive. They think it's food so they land on it but then they find out it's Sorry, sticky it so they can't get it. Some ones are alive because they just have their feet. But most of them are dead. Look. Oh. So it's six o'clock in the morning and uh, we've just done a night watch from uh, Tunisia to Sardinia. It's been quite a quiet night, the wind's been okay, slightly in the wrong direction but we managed okay. Pretty much on schedule I think. Um, kids have slept well, uh, Renka's due on watch any minute. We went quite north and now um, we're heading west. Uh, and we've got wind on our beam, which is really nice. So we've got a good point to sail. We're going over six knots now, constant. We did actually see a few dolphins, so we all rushed out, but um, they didn't stay with us for very long. Uh, so now we're just kind of out on deck a bit. We can see land, that's Sardinia. And um, we've had some scrambled egg and beans for lunch. Yum. And uh, yeah, not long now, probably about 40 miles or so to go, which is actually still um, eight hours for us. Or maybe a bit less, seven, six or seven hours. And we can just see the outline of it now. So we're just coming into Sardinia um, and realised that we didn't have an Italian courtesy flag, so we've had to um, make our own flag from bits of other flag. So we've got the Italian flag there and the Q flag there. And Sardinia was there, so we better get it up now because we'll be in in about an hour and a half. Q flag, that means. Um, quarantine flag. So that's for um, saying you need customs clearance and officially you're not allowed to go ashore until uh, you've been checked and you can take your flag down.
the kids don't always eat a lot on passage it depends on the sea conditions so when they don't they are always very hungry when we arrive in our port and where are we we're inside the Sardinia. Dinner and Sardinia. Dinner and Sardinia? Yeah. Is that because you want your dinner? Yeah. Did you have your dinner last night? No. Why? Because it, because um, we were full sick and we just watched the film. Okay, so we're going to have dinner in Sardinia tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I think they're famous for their food because it's called Sardinia. Good. Barbecue! Burgers and sausages, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of coleslaw. Secretly, I have a bit of chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah. Oh. And do you and want to try some? Really ice. Yum. So when we arrived at Cagliari, we anchored out, as we um, often do, but the anchorage was very swelly, which is probably why there was no other boats around. So we went into the um, marina, which is quite unusual for us. We try not to go in marinas. Our boat fits in so well. Oh, that's a boat guide, look. It was um, quite expensive for us. It's 80 euros. And um, there was nothing really special about the marina. It was kind of, facilities were quite basic. But um, we had to get inside because we really need to check in after coming from Tunisia, which is outside the EU, we had to um, check in back into Europe. So checking into a country I've found is always quite difficult because the places that you have to go is often some sort of back of beyond port somewhere. Um, and they never seem to have any signs on the doors and um, no one ever seems to know where it is. Our usual story, we're trying to find the customs and the port police. Um, it's always a big trek and it's always hot and never can find it, but anyway. It's Saturday and they're closed on Saturdays, the Port Police and Customs, and they're closed on Sundays. But we're not allowed to leave until we've had our passport stamped because we've come from Tunisia. So we've been told we've got to go to the airport to um, check into the country so we can leave again tomorrow. Okay. Anyways, it's a day out, isn't it, on the train? It's a new experience. We went to tourist information, because they're always good, and they sent us to tax-free, but the tax-free doesn't want to help us, because he says we're not, we've got to go to the police, which makes more sense, um, because we haven't got any gifts or anything. So we're going upstairs to Primero floor to find the police. Let's go. Okay, so we went to... Um, the police say to to get our passport stamps and um, they said it's not necessary because we're UK, EU. I'm doing this on camera so that if we meet another port and they say that why didn't we get our passport stamp, that I'm just proving that we went all the way here and they didn't want to stamp it. I didn't really think it was going to happen anyway but that's what we were told. So anyway we're going back now, I've had a good experience in the airport and <laughs> now we carry on our sightseeing trip of Sardinia. We've been probably about three hours not getting our passport stamped. <laughs> So after our visit to the airport, we decided to wander around the town and have a little look and do some window shopping. I've just been shopping in, well not shopping, but looking in Zara. The butchers also is quite difficult and um, the stuff they selling is always a little bit surprising. And you bought a horse. It was like <laughs> the one over there. It looks the same, but um, luckily Woody understood the word for horse in Italian. I don't know how he learned that, but. <laughs> yeah, and the chicken is there, yeah? Pule. This is really beautiful and it's quite surprising to see other boats finally anchored out, you know, enjoying this really nice bay. It looks like a bit of a kind of holiday resort as well because there's loads of people on the beach and there's hotels and it's surrounded by these mountains in the background. 
really, really pretty. The bay is called Pula Bay. Now we've dropped the anchor down, we put this snubber on, the hook, and we just hook it on the anchor. So it takes the pressure off um, the windlass and it takes the pressure off the bow roller. It would have been um, nice to stay in Sardinia a lot longer. We only managed to really sort of skip along the, the south coast. But um, because we stayed a bit longer in Tunisia, waiting for the right weather and getting you know, a lot of work done, we didn't really have time to explore Sardinia and we really had to get to the Balearics, which is where we were meeting family and friends. Well, we've got an unexpected lightning storm passing to the west and I'm just a bit concerned that oh, we need to get all out. of the boats have certainly ran for the marina and we're the only one left anchored out. Very in touch with the metal shroud. Yeah. It's a storm, we have to wait for it to pass so before we can go swimming again or the lightning is going to strike the water and we'll die. Why don't you put the microwave again? So the microwave in effect is a Faraday cage which means that no um, electromagnetic energy can get through it because it's got tiny little holes which don't allow it to be electric waves through. There's some really exposed areas on the south coast of Sardinia we hopped along some anchorages. We found some really nice places, but um, we also got caught out a few times. The holding isn't brilliant either because they have a lot of the posidinia. It's really hard to find patches of sand in amongst all this kind of um, posidinia grass that grows. And um, we weren't really used to that. That was a new thing for us. On one um, morning we woke up and yeah, our anchor didn't hold at all. We got dragged out, out to sea, luckily. What happened, Woody? Well, we had a bit of a blow offshore last night and the anchor is dragged so we, I think we've moved out to sea and we're not even sure where the anchor's holding anymore so uh, it's a bit of an emergency start this morning so we're going to get the anchor up hopefully, hopefully it hasn't caught under a rock or anything and uh, might as well get going There's the beach that we were anchored at We managed to pick up a fishing net in the anchor when the anchor dragged last night but the thing is it's really hard to keep the bow of the boat in the wind in this weather That was the first thing that happened and then because we had to leave so quickly we didn't have our dinghy um, hoisted up and it wasn't secured very well. It, actually it was our youngest that noticed our dinghy um, was kind of slowly disappearing into the distance. So we had to do a quick man of board procedure and try and retrieve it. And that wasn't easy. There's a lot of lobster pots around there which the fishermen had just laid and um, it was quite a lot of wind and quite a lot of swell so it was really quite a tricky manoeuvre but good practice. Can you see lobster pots? You have to be really careful of the lobster pots because what we didn't want to do was um, get a lobster pot caught around our propeller as well as losing our dinghy and dragging anchors. There's too many things in one day. So after all that drama, we eventually came round to a nice sheltered bay which our friends recommended, our friends from Malta. Uh, so we caught up with them a bit, that was really, really nice. And it's slightly more sheltered than where we were. So um, we're just going to anchor here and wait it out for a few days. And um, yeah, because it was quite sheltered, we could do a few bits and pieces on the boat. We had to um, mount, re -mouse some lines on our solar arch, um, replace the metal with some um, of string that we're going to eventually put the wires through. You said we weren't allowed to climb up there. This is adult area only. So I'm never allowed to go up there but you guys are. Adult lounge. We put cushions up here and... You can bring us coffee and tea with them. Be ha ha ha. But you said it wouldn't be able to hold our weight. It won't. Be too fast. Why is it holding your weight? Because we're nice and thin. I'm going to go up there. And also we knew that we're going on a big passage in the next few days across the Balearic so we wanted to make sure we could pole out our head sail. So we practiced putting up the pole and attaching all the lines for that and just kind of familiarising ourselves really with the whole 
system and way it works on an AML. It, we found out about how to do that was to use this 18 year old brochure that came with the boats and on there's a picture of the pole all rigged and tied up so that's what we use as our reference material. So the pole is supposed to be used with the spinnaker so you can have both the genoa and the spinnaker out. You don't drop the, spinning, um, the genoa when you have the spinnaker out. Um, we're not quite ready to do that yet but um, at least we can use the pole now to pole out just the headsail which would be good for going downwind. There's another ballooner as well which goes on the mizzen so there's loads of other options we've got two more sails we've even used yet. The blue one is brings the pole forwards stops it going back and we put a block down here it's back to the cleat midships. The yellow one is the downhaul attaches with a shackle there comes down here to a cleat. The cleats on the midships on the tow rail up through the little block to the mast, another block in the mast, and it comes down to a cleat. And the, the red one stops the pole from moving forwards. That is attached to a cleat just down where the ladder attaches. That's four lines, okay, keeping that in place. You can put your sheet outside everything and just put it through the end, and with hoping that will enable us to pole out our genoa. to go around the headland and come to this bay where we knew some kind of uh, friends that we'd met in Malta were going to be. Although we might need to put the anchor down again and maybe try and find a better patch of sand for the night. Beautiful beach, it's beautiful white sand, aquamarine water, uh, it's perfect. Um, our boat's anchored out there. Woody's on board because we're not quite ready to leave the boat in these sort of winds. It's, it's sheltered here but it's quite a strong maestral blowing through so um, that should ease off in a day or so and then we could start heading over to the Balearic Islands which is our next big sail trip. Yeah so finally the weather switched and we could see kind of a bit of a weather window for a few days. What have you got for breakfast today? Porridge. Yum. <laughs> okay so we're on passage from Sardinia to um, where are we going this time? Ibiza. Ibiza in the Balearic Islands. We've uh -huh. moved, <laughs> we're moving so much that I've actually lost track of where we are and where we're going and what time it is. But, um, and we have, um, oh, here we go. We also got extra crew. We've got company. We've got my lovely friend, Alex. I've swapped my steering wheel at home with my car for this and it's really nice. <laughs> so I've been on deck most of the afternoon doing different stretches <laughs> trying to open up my lungs and feel good so I oh, can't tell you how nice it is to be here so we're stuck in the middle of the ocean right now there is absolutely no one around it's uh, it's been quiet for maybe the last 12 hours I've just spotted a vessel over there and I think that's a fishing vessel but that's about it so peaceful looking at the water gazing out it's, yeah you can feel yourself just getting healthier and changing it's nice what have you been doing all day um i've been editing vlogs fun yeah mm. so i'm a bit kind of leery -eyed. we had a bit of wind on the first day and then no wind on the second day and we're back to kind of motoring again so this knitting i started in the winter and i'm still working on it because i well, actually i haven't really been working on it because quite busy but my brother's coming out and it's supposed to be like a tea cozy for him so you never know maybe I'll have the tea cozy ready when he comes. What are you making for lunch Alex? I'm making well very exciting. We have uh, red peppers and tomato mm. that look quite tasty. Nice. Tuna, feta and boiled eggs like a salad nichoise. Oh lovely. But it fits. <laughs> so people can select what they want. <laughs> so other than that, you know, wherever we are in the world, whatever we're doing, schooling continues. So I get y equals two times x minus. Do you know a bit of algebra? Like, if two, if it was like two a equals so yeah, two x minus two y. So two times x minus three. I don't matter already. 
What are you trying to do? You're in, you're in. The other thing that I guess a lot of families have to try and work out is how kids keep themselves occupied on, on long passages, because, you know, how they deal with the kind of boredom and that awful word, you know. But, um, yeah, we've, they, we've found quite a few different ways. Um, so we've got um, GarageBand on the phones and the iPads, and they make music like that. They quite enjoy doing that. Was here yours, Rowan? Well, I haven't finished it, but this is the start. Okay. Do mine, but I didn't do all of it. This is my song. They also listen to um, Audiobooks. Audiobooks are a really good thing. It's, you don't have to kind of have your eyes open even. You lie down, listen to it. We have an app called Audible and um, we've got various books that the children can listen to like um, Fantastic Beasts and How to Find Them. Um, where to find them. And where to find them. Once fully aware of the existence of the miracle, though they knew it by the name of Dodo, muggles believe they have hunted the species to extinction. A spate of kangaroo killings in the late 1970s were attributed to a male opal eye ousted from his homeland. David Williams' books. Was where children. Percy Jackson. We are, we listen to sometimes when we're on watch is also audible books. We'd be listening to all the Greek myths on it. A really good way to keep yourself entertained. Otherwise, it'd be really boring. <laughs> and um, when all that fails, they kind of make up their own games. Really. What's going on? actually and it's a really nice bay it looks like it's kind of a nature reserve which smells like it you can smell the wood and the trees so I think maybe later we'll go ashore and explore for a bit a little walk on land yeah. <laughs> the first place we hit land was Mallorca a lovely kind of bay in the southeast side of Mallorca it was really beautiful I mean there was nothing there um, apart from nudist beach but um yeah it was nice to get off the boat and get on land and um, just make some sand castles. Right, so we've hit land in Mallorca um, and we're going to shoot straight across to Ibiza tomorrow because the wind's right. So actually we're going tonight because it's the best wind tonight. So yeah, let's have a little look around. Hi Woody! He's playing with his buckets and spades. He's a very happy boy. <laughs> Dad, look! So if it falls down, like all that was weak, that would hold it. Oh no! Problem. Actually, we didn't even stay a night because the, the, wind, the wind was right to go south, so we just stayed the day, um, relaxed a bit, caught up a bit of sleep, and then carried on south to Ibiza. So we're on the final stage of our journey now to Ibiza. Uh, one last overnighter. I've got the uh, 12 to 3 watch. Um, it's quite quiet. It's very dark. The moon's just gone. Nothing on the radar, nothing on the AIS. So our journey that started out in Greece, went through Malta, Tunisia, Sardinia, and a brief stop off in Mallorca, and our final stage to Ibiza, where we're going to hopefully stay for a few weeks, catch up with some family and friends, enjoy a bit of the summer before moving on. beautiful islands of Ibiza. Woody's on a mission.
position. What do you reckon, Rowan? So we've got a massive trolley of shopping. But we've got to get to the boat, the dinghy, and get to the boat because we're going to be going around the island. And um, there's no shops around the islands because it's quite remote-ish. So uh, we've stocked up from Little. How heavy is that? Very heavy. <laughs> We have stocked up on the vital things like fruit, apples, bananas, eggs, spinach, tomatoes, peppers, snacks, peanuts, wraps. Tonight we're having Mexican with. I haven't um, had those for hundred years. Doritos, spicy. It's very cheesy. Oh. <laughs> We've been travelling for quite a few days, so we haven't really had many treats and stuff. I'm making chocolate brownies. Because Uncle John's coming over tomorrow. More chocolate to go in yet. Can't get me. Um, the Bay of San Antonio in Ibiza is famous for its sunsets. Everyone goes to Cafe Mambo and all those places and um, yeah, just watches it with a sundae on it. It doesn't matter where you are, what you've got, how much you've got. Cafe, super yacht, our yacht, any yacht really. It's the same beautiful sunset. Great. Beautiful picture. I want to hear it. What do you think of this anchorage, Woody? It's probably the most uncomfortable anchorage we've ever been on. <laughs> it's quite funny that your head keeps disappearing. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think Sardinia looks like then? It looks like looks that. Like right, so what do you have for dinner? <laughs> Jam roly poly! <laughs> Thanks to our patrons for making these videos happen. 
If you want to become a patron, you can just click on the link. If not, thank you for watching adverts at the beginning as well. Watching the adverts is good for us because we get a few pennies our way. And um, also thank you for sharing these videos. Now, even if you've subscribed, you might not receive notifications. So please do press that notification bell and you will know when our video comes out straight away. And if you want to do it, do it. Hey, you'll always be